Okay, today we're looking at tooth number 21. 21 has um, some recession, um, a minimal band of keratinized tissue, but when I feel down here, there's this root roughness, and there's looks like a ditched out area underneath there. And I suspect that it's root resorption. Um, we're gonna do an alloderm graft here, and um, so normally we would do a connected flap, but in this case, we're gonna do um, flap reflection. You doing okay, Ben? Mm -hmm. Great. He also had some pocketing on the distal of number 18, secondary to... Okay, turn to the right a little more. Secondary to a third molar removal, so I've already scoped that. Hard to tell, but you know, it could be just the very beginning of the root resorption. Because you know, what I felt is this little ditched out area here, and it's, I don't know. Okay, scaling. I don't think I have to do the gerasone, though. No. Which is good. Or, uh, the road. These are micro scissors. Okay, so I treated the root with some tetracycline, and now we're going to get the alloderm shaped. Okay, I got my alloderm shaped, and um, that in, and Now, in doing these graphs, one option is to suture the alloderm and then go back and suture the flap. And in this case, you can see that I've been able to get the alloderm and the flap sutured at the same time. And I think, you know, that is fine. And, um, you know, truthfully, I've been doing it that way for about 10 years. And some people say that you can't put uh, the alloderm connective tissue side on the flap side, it should be on the tooth side, and other people say it should be just the opposite. You know, um, what I've seen in my experience 
is that it doesn't really matter. I've done it both ways. One thing, though, that I find is that if I put the connective tissue side on the flap side, there's a little better, um, I mean, it kind of clots together better. Then again, you know, I have no absolute proof that that's how it is. It's just been a flake for many meets. Is this the young kid? Uh, no, he's a senior. He finally made 12 feet, so it was just like huge. And this other kid, who's a sophomore, who's just been very inconsistent, finally jumped 11. And this other girl, a senior, who just started pole vaulting this year, jumped 8 6, so it was like a real great. How'd he end it? Ian started at 14, cleared it on his first jump, cleared his 15 on a second jump and then just stopped. Really? Alright, that's our final suturing and um, you know, I don't think we're going to need to pack it. I'm just going to put some uh, cyanoacrylate on the edge. And I'm applying the uh, cyanoacrylate here. Putting some water on it seems to help set it. Okay. okay, this is a two-week healing of the grafting on number 21. We've got the whole root covered. Um, you can probably appreciate some thick thickness. Here, and this is where the alloderm is underneath here and um, I'll take a look at it in a few months. So this is a four month healing of the alloderm graft on number 21 um, and he got really good root coverage, the tissue's thicker now um, and it's got a little marginal inflammation but I asked him not to brush directly into the gum line. He had his teeth cleaned today had some pocketing on the lower, on the distal of 18, there was an 8, and we scoped that, put some arrestin in there, and now it's probing a 5. So we're going to be seeing him in four months. We'll just kind of follow his um, perio, and then, uh, but this, the, the graph looks great. It looks like nothing ever happened. There you can see in the interproximal papilla area between 20 and 21 and 22, there's a little bit of a line there where we made our initial incision and coronally position that tissue, but um, you know we'll see how that remodels in the upcoming months. This is a two and a half year follow up of the grafting that we did on the facial of number 21 where he had some root resorption that we plastied out and then coronally positioned it with alloderm underneath. It looks real stable, everything's real healthy.